hello. My name is Pablo Golub. Uh, they call me senior database consultant. At least that what I'm getting money for. But deep inside my soul, I'm still young and handsome developer, right? And I want to I want to tell you about my passion, scheduling, about the project I did, and I will tell you about a lot of different projects we have in our world, Postgres world. Uh, okay, so I know this is the last talk in the conference, so maybe you're tired already, so let's make it easy and funny. If you have any question, whatever you want, my hate, my weight, whatever, just ask, I will answer. Uh, so I want to start. So this is, talk, this is the talk about the scheduling. So I want to, to tell you the story about scheduling of the flights, especially the flights to the PGCon Brazil. So my first flight was to Zurich, and it was delayed, of course. And right after the landing, the lady in uniform met me and said, Mr. Golub, here is a car. We need to go right away to the, uh, your next flight. Otherwise, you can you cannot make it. I just like, ooh, business promotion for free, right? Cool. And I just like, okay, but I have only one question. What about my luggage? She's just like, well, they can make it. If not, you can always find me, and I will apologize for telling you lies. Okay, and I was just like in shorts, pink t-shirt, slippers, and I was like, oh, that would be a, a great outfit to give a talk, right? Okay, let it be. So, everything is cool. I'm on the Boeing 777. Of course, I got the seat in the middle. Great people, one, one man from the Greece and the lady from Brazil. Everything is perfect. The captain is saying, hello, we are going to Sao Paulo. Our flight will be 10 hours. Just relax. In a couple of minutes, we'll go. In a couple of minutes, the same captain says, I'm sorry, but the crown control informed us that some man sneaked into the luggage compartment. And the police is uh, asking the questions, trying to understand what was the purpose and what he did in that luggage compartment. I know that by the rules, if something like that happened, they usually need to unload the whole luggage, check the airplane, and load it again. So I know it's two hours late at least. I'm still in the middle seat of a row. <laughs> I don't want to disturb anyone, just like to, oh, may I just like go there and there? And like, yeah, okay. I turn the film. And then I see the, the question of people asking, why? Why someone wants to sneak into the luggage compartment to get from Switzerland to Brazil? Usually, it's the opposite. <laughs> now I know the answer. I'm sure that man wanted to visit Pichicon, Brazil. <laughs> because after the first day, when I tried churrasco, when I tried caipirinha, when I tried cachaça, I fully understand that man. <laughs> But please, in real life, don't try to do that because I'm sure uh, one cannot stay alive after transatlantic 10 hours flight in the luggage compartment. So please don't. Okay, so by the way, thanks to translation team, you're perfect. 
I understand that my jokes are sometimes has several levels. Like, you know, as a non-native English speaker, I'm trying to joke inside my hand in Ukrainian, then translate to English, and then you get the Portuguese translation. So please <laughs> take it easy. Okay, so uh, I'm working for uh, Cybertech. Cybertech is the solely uh, PostgreSQL company. So if you have PostgreSQL, you can be our client. If you don't have PostgreSQL, we will install it and you can be our client. <laughs> That's how, but, but uh, we are like distributed company. So uh, right now we have a branch in Uruguay, but most of our developers and admins uh, are living in Argentina right now. I mean, for Latin America. Hopefully, someday, maybe next year, we will, uh, not we, but I mean, the community will arrange the conference in Argentina. I would like to go there. Uh, so, yeah, some of our clients, some of them, as you understand, didn't have the Postgres, but now they do. Uh, choose your fighter. <laughs> so, okay, uh, today's agenda about scheduling. So, um, I want to describe what we have now in our PostgreSQL world about scheduling. Scheduling is exe exe executing some tasks periodically, right? Like cron or whatever. So I would describe what tools we have, how can we use it, what are the pros and cons of uh, these tools. And at the, at, the, at the end of the talk, I will try to give... Um, Demo, live demo. Uh, I know that the first rule of presentations do not ever do a live demo, but come on, <laughs> we are in Brazil, what can go wrong? <laughs> After the story with that man in luggage compartment. <laughs> okay, so why would anyone want to use uh, scheduling tasks? Oh, whatever, uh, backups, maintenance, uh, some client actions like saving emails, downloading, aggregation, whatever, a lot of options. Um, different levels of scheduling. So uh, I want to talk about the built-in schedulers in the other database systems. I want to talk about the system schedulers like Chrome, and I will go later for the specific PostgreSQL solutions. So uh, what do we have uh, now? The built-in schedulers are present in Microsoft SQL, Oracle, and MySQL, and DB2. I'm not talking about time series or enterprise DB. They probably do have uh, the, uh, the schedulers. I'm just not sure. But it's not, it's not true for PostgreSQL. The thing is that the architecture of Postgres was built, ex, uh, was built extensible, was made extensible. And the thing is, if you can do something externally, you should do it. So uh, the, I, I like the answer about the uh, built-in scheduler by Alvaro Herrera. So he said that many people say it's not necessary and probably some hackers would oppose it but mainly I think we just haven't agreed what the design of such a scheduler uh, would look like. For example, do we want it to be to able to just connect and run queries, or do we want something more elaborate, like start programs, uh, running dumps, whatever? What if the program crashes? If this, the part of the Postgres, should the whole server crash or should it proceed? Um, what about system scheduling? You probably all know these tools. Uh, Cron and a Cron, Windows has its own built-in scheduler. Uh, cloud environments, of course, provide you with the scheduling solutions. Uh, the Cron job is the part of Kubernetes. But the, um, the thing is that your system scheduling facility 
knows nothing about your PostgreSQL database, knows nothing about your data, how to deal with it. Um, and here we, here we come for the uh, PostgreSQL specific solutions. So the, these are that you can find or Google. Some of them probably are not alive anymore, but for the, for the sake of truth, I, I, I add it here to just compare what we have. The oldest one is a PG agent, which was the part of the PG admin uh, graphical user interface uh, tool. So of course it's written in C++. Now, as you know, the modern version of the uh, PG admin is written in Python, but the PG agent is still implemented in C++. And uh, yeah, you can find the, uh, the, the, the source uh, following this link. And later I will uh, describe the differences between all these uh, solutions. Another one is a JPG agent. J stands for Java. The thing is, as usual, uh, someone was not very happy with the PG agent and he said, oh no, I will do it my way and I will do it in Java because I know Java, right? So the JPG agent is the compatible uh, solution with the PG agent. You can read the configuration, execute the same uh, tasks, and it adds some enhancements. And probably most of you, if you were talking about the scheduling, most of you know the PG cron. It's also the, the, the very uh, old already um, project, uh, one of a kind, because it's implemented as a background worker. That means that PG Chrome runs as a process of the PostgreSQL. I will tell later what the difference uh, uh, and how, 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 different, um, uh, how different could be implementation of background worker or, or, uh, or external, um, external application. Um, just for notice, we have PG Bucket, previously run seven, uh, yeah, and now the, the main question, if we have already five or more projects, some of them died, why would you want another one? Um, well, the answer, the answer is uh, the client wants it. So we had a client with the specific needs. Uh, they were very detailed and the, the, the task was just, can you implement it in the shortest time? Yeah, let's try. Uh, so that's how PG timetable arrived. Uh, why PG timetable? Very strange name, right? The thing is that everything with the cron word was already taken. And the best option I found as a non-native English speaker was a timetable. Okay, let it be. So PG timetable. The main principles, it should be simple. Like one minute setup, no installation. You have your binary, you run it. But as uh, once said famous singer Marshall Mathers, also known as Eminem, I've created a monster. Nowadays, PG timetable can do a lot more and probably not everyone knows about all the functionality it hides. So it should be non-invasive. It should be run under the regular user. Just like we create someone, we give it permission for the uh, schema work. Uh, it should create every schema, every data automatically. Uh, it should proceed with a huge numbers of jobs. Huge number means hundreds of thousands. Yeah, just like that. It should run on every possible platform. If we even don't ship the binaries for some platforms like uh, OpenBSD or FreeBSD, it should be 
is enough to build for them. And the idea is that we want to run both the queries, like SQL, and SQL, not only function, like select. Do you want to run select? Just, OK, we're fine. Do you want to create, do DDL, DML, whatever? We want to run programs, not only terminals, but any program you want. Like, for example, you want to create a special Docker container where you put the PG timetable and several more binaries that you should use in your like workload and ship it, right? And we have several built-in tasks because it's easier to implement them uh, inside than to use some external tooling. Uh, right now, there are emailing, downloading, uh, and some more. OK, so these are the supported environments. So if you know another cloud service provider, just let me know. We support everyone. And yeah, every PostgreSQL version and maybe less 9.6 should work, but since it's not supported officially, we drop support for it. And as I said, uh, we ship uh, binaries for Linux, macOS, and Windows, but if someone wants to build, we support other uh, operating system as well. Okay, so the uh, comparison tables of the solutions we have. So uh, um, as I as I told you, the PG agent was the oldest one. Just like oh, it's all in eight. It's like how many? Fourteen years, right? So um, what we have here? The oops, sorry. So implementation. Uh, as I said, so. Every, every, every solution except PG Cron is implemented as a standalone solution. That means this is the binary that runs externally, then connects to your database and do the job. PG Cron is implemented as background worker. It's a part of the uh, PostgreSQL. It's one of its processes. Um, so, What we want from our solutions? Of course, we want to run some SQL, right? So every every project can do that. Uh, then probably we want to run programs. If we want to run shell, we just do bash dash c command, right, and do whatever we want. Uh, usually, we want some parallel jobs, uh, and of course, we want to set some limits just not to burn out our server. Uh, concurrency protection means if we have several workers and they all can execute the same job on the same chain, right? Uh, how can we say that, no, no more than two instances of this job should, should run simultaneously? Um, task parameters is if you can put something inside your uh, inside your job, like pretend you have a job which sends a lot of emails, could you provide a list of uh, emails where to send? Can you provide the um, bodies of these emails constructed from templates, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Uh, then, can this uh, can this solution be uh, run under the certain role, right? We don't want to give uh, some super user permissions to to whatever we have in the system. We want to we want to give only certain permissions. And the last on success and on error task. That means should we do something if everything is good, or should we do something if the uh, job is failed? Um, about notation, so how can we tell our uh, application when and how to run our uh, jobs or chains? First of all, probably all of you know the uh, standard cron tab notation, right? So the, uh, the the string 
from five parts, first for seconds, last for day of weeks. Uh, yeah. We go further and we, we introduce the interval. So let's say I'm not sure when exactly I want to run my, uh, my uh, job, right? But I know that I want to run it every 90, 90 minutes, right? Or I want to run every 90 minutes from the successful operation before. Like I'm starting the backup. It takes, I don't know, 12 years or oh, hours. And after that, I want to repeat in 90 minutes, right? Um, we can start manually. We can pause the kill uh, the job running. We can limit the uh, timeout per job, per step, per task. We can disable it, so it's still in the system. <clears throat> it's still in the system, but it's ignored by the worker. Uh, and the self-destructive jobs, I will talk about them later. Okay, so um, about terminology. Um, when we designed picture timetable, from the very first step, we knew that we will use the complicated chain hierarchy. So our job are made of steps. So each step is called task. And the chain of tasks is a chain, right? So the chain is the same as a job and the task is the same as a step. Um, yeah. For example, the, the simplest uh, chain of tasks like start transaction, download something, uh, do whatever you want with your new data, then delete the file and the commit. The uh, start transaction and the commit are automatic. Are automatic. That means that whatever happens between start transaction and, and commit, if we failed, we can roll back it. But not the operation on the file system, like downloading data. If we download it, we, we cannot delete it. We, we, we don't know exactly what should, what to do. So everything that is done in the transaction on the database will be rolled back. But everything you've done on the file system, sorry, please take care of it. Uh, okay. About logging, we have two kinds of logs. First of all, it's a session log where you can see um, what chains are ready to run, um, what tasks are executed, what, is, what are the return codes for, for that operation, et cetera, et cetera. And we have logs for the tasks themselves. For example, if, you, if your task is running uh, some uh, program, you probably want to get the output from the program for investigation if something happened, right? So we have session log and we have execution log. Later, you can check these logs, you can aggregate them, you can delete them, you can do whatever you want. Uh, and yeah. Database side log means that you can write uh, user interface applications, but for now there is no, <laughs> there is no any. Uh, okay, so um, as I said, the concurrency uh, implemented uh, as a lightweight go routines, so we can run uh, uh, hundreds, hundred. Okay, several thousands for sure because I tested. But yeah, I know that some of our clients are using extensively this solution, so I'm I'm pretty much sure about it. And we want to save everything in our database. Configuration, our uh, information about the about our uh, chains, tasks, parameters, whatever. Why? Because it's easy then to Back up it, restore it, right? You're not dependent on extension 
on the update of that extension. So every time you run new version of the PG timetable, it checks the version of the schema. And if it's needed, it will be updated. It will warn you. So I'm running again against the old schema version. Do you want to upgrade? If you want to upgrade, please specify the uh, additional um, command line option. Uh, OK. As I said, uh, uh, we have uh, concurrency protection. So we want to know, we want to know uh, if the chain can be run by several workers. For example, you, 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 you can have one uh, database, but you can have several workers. One will, I don't know, gather the logs. Another one will do backups. Third one will send emails, whatever. To distinguish between these clients, uh, there is a client name specified when you start your PG timetable. Uh, and each chain has the uh, configuration parameter, so how many instances can be run simultaneously by, other, uh, by, 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 by the workers. You can specify that this particular chain should be run only by the worker emailer, right, or backupper. Or this particular chain should be uh, should be limited to two instances simultaneously. Um, another uh, another requirement was to the, the ability to ignore some errors. Um, for for tasks, not for the whole chain because it's I don't know, but but for 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 some task. For example, if I want to download, do something, and then I want to send email or, or add a log, and if I cannot, I do not care, because the main of this job was to, to download and put the data. If I cannot send email right now, I don't care what happened. Maybe the uh, recipient is, or, or server is busy or whatever. I don't care. I just ignore it. It will go to the logs, the, the task with this number, execute it, we got error, but we ignore it and proceed. And uh, another feature is exclu exclusive execution. Uh, so some chains or some tasks need to have exclusive access to the database. Like if you want to create new database or you want to, 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 to make a vacuum or, or, or something like that. Uh, this way, how, how it proceeds. So the PG timetable reads the configuration. It, it see that there is a chain with the exclusive option. It will wait for all chains, for all jobs to stop, to finish, and then will run this one exclusively. And after it finishes, it will resume all other chains. Uh, Self-destructive chains. My chief loves them a lot. Uh, the idea is that you can create custom chains, custom jobs, maybe using user interface or maybe uh, with uh, some automation. Just put them into the system. They will run, and, and if uh, everything is OK, they will just be deleted. If not, they will be retried according to your options. Um, architecture. Uh, so yeah, as I said, we did it in the Go language. So the database, of course, is PostgreSQL. Uh, if you want, you can use other target databases. Uh, so the configuration database to which the PG timetable connects is the one. But if you have several databases, or if you want to execute the same chain on several uh, databases in the same cluster, you can say, OK, uh, execute this chain on this connection string, this chain on this connection string. And so the, the worker, will, uh, worker will read the configuration, will read the connection string, then will connect to the target database, execute everything you set to it, will return and put the execution code, the status, into the, uh, into the target database, into the configuration database. 
Um, yeah, it's easy to, to apply the monitoring because everything, everything is stored in the table and I will show later how it's, how it's, yeah, so this is the, uh, I, I drew it, I drew, drew it, drew it. Well, what a masterpiece, right? Uh, but yeah, we have, we have, we have, we have people with the straight uh, hands. So <laughs> they, they, um, they did this. So as I said, this is our configuration main database, right? We can run worker on the same host. We can run another worker on the remote host. There are, there is possibility to run several, I mean, multiple workers. We just don't care. The thing is that the each instance has its own unique client name, like here is the worker zero one. Here is the worker zero two, and you can you can you can set that uh, this chain should be executed by that one. This chain can be executed by anyone. I don't care, and this chain should be executed by the this one. Um, yeah. So the the idea is that um, program tasks are run uh, are running on the same host where the uh, the where the uh, PG timetable instance is running. So for example, you can have several instances, one on Linux, one on Windows, and they can use the uh, the, the the functionality of that operating system, right? Um, and yeah, the monitoring. So um Um, everything you see, so, so first time I, I, I made this talk before the COVID, right in January, right? January 19, 20. And in, in, in two weeks, the, the, the pandemic started. So, um, and I have a, I have plenty of time, as you can see. So I implemented everything. <laughs> the only thing is on or event handler. I'm still not sure if somebody needs that because you can emulate that. You can have another chain, another job that will check the return statuses of other jobs and will do whatever you want. Like we are running every five minutes. Okay, if that chain failed, okay, delete file. If that chain failed, okay, do something. So it's not, I mean, it's not very important. Um, I would like to, I would like to implement background worker implementation, uh, not because we really need that. It's some kind of challenge. Uh, first of all, since the application is written in Go language, uh, we need to have some kind of um, intermediate functionality to, 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 to talk to the, to the, to the Postgres. But yeah, since it's, it's not, it's not needed. I mean, it's not necessary. It's still in my to do. Okay. So let's, let's start. Let's see how can we, how can we use the pitch time table in the real life? So, oh, sorry. So as I said, here we have uh, the uh, PowerShell windows. Here we have uh, Ubuntu Bash. And we will try to run some jobs under Windows, some jobs under the uh, Linux, and we'll see the difference. Well, first of all, let's try to connect to our database. Yeah. So what do we have here? Oh yeah, probably. Is it okay? Oh, cool. And let's do that. Okay, so uh, we do have roles. The the, the one is Pasha. That, that's my name, Pablo. But in more like you no know, way. And we have a special uh, user scheduler, right? 
uh, every time you want to, 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 to every time you want to apply the the, the scheduling functionality, you probably well, you need to create a special user, a special role, and to monitor what exactly uh, permissions you would give to it. You would give to it. Uh, and let's check what namespaces we have. Only public, right? So I'm just wanted to show you that I want I, I will build from sources and run it. So you can see how fast it is, how fast it is to build and to run it. So here we can see that I will go run, main go is the, the main file of our project. Then we have client name, the unique client name for every instance. Then I can specify the connection string to our, um, to our database. You can use whatever you want. If you want to use the old fashioned like D, name of the database, H, host, whatever, you can do that. Or you can do this um, URL uh, connection strings. So I um, run it. I run it. And what do we have here? So we are starting a new session, connection established. We see that. Uh, no schema present. The PGTM table executes the DDL to create its schema. So it added some uh, check constraints, it added some functions, uh, and then it said, okay, I'm ready to go. So I'm accepting a synchronous chain execution. So if you want to run something right now, you can go into a PSQL and say select timetable run chain number that one and will it will immediately go into the worker and it will execute it. Later we can see that there are chains that can be executed on reboot. Why it's useful. For example, if you are updated your PG timetable and you want to 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 execute some actions after upgrade like log rotation or log deletion or whatever. So at the start of the session, you can do whatever you want. And then we see that we have separate workers for interval chains, interval so each 10 seconds or each 10 minutes, and the separate for the regular chains, which are stored at the, as the um, cron notation. So, now let's start to add something. Um, in the project, we have a samples folder. Can you see it? We have a samples folder and we put there as much as possible. Sometimes the, the functionality itself is not really smart, like just send some logs or send some notifies. But here you will find every piece of functionality you, you can use in the pitch timetable. So I will start with the uh, basic one. If you have a one step job like you do in PG Cron, yes, you can use the predefined function add job to specify the job name, to, spec to specify the um, cron notation of uh, when to run it. Uh, then you specify the job command. Here we have a job kind SQL. That means we need to use some SQL command. Uh, for example, here we have pg notify. And we can specify the parameters which we want to pass to that functions. Parameters are just like uh, the uh, simple uh, JSON B array. Uh, we want, if you want to, to say that only specific workers can execute this task, we put, we, we need to change the job client name. Here we say that we want max instances of one. Job life means, yeah, it's enabled. Let's do it. It's not self-destructive. And if there will be some errors, just ignore it, right? So let's start to edit. I will use PSQL. 
So everything is in the database. So I just execute the regular script. And we see that we have already uh, the, uh, the first job, the first chain in our database. Let's try to see what changed inside the database. So, for example, we can chain. Oh, it's better to do it from from Linux because there we have uh, the common completion. So, for example, table timetable chain. So we have one row for 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 our chain. Uh, what about, for example, task? Yeah, so for, for for chain number one, we have a task number one, which will execute the command pg notify, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so let's try to run it. Q. Okay, what, what's going on here? Um, now the pg timetable connects to the database it uh, see that the schema is already present. So we skip that part when we're creating everything we need to work. And we're trying to retrieve information about jobs we have in the system. And right now we have only one job, only one chain, and we are trying to, we are trying to execute it, right? So, okay, starting chain number one, chain number one has a task number one, we start in task, Task executed successfully, chain executed successfully. Uh, transaction ID, why do we need that? The thing is that, as I said, you can have several multiple instances of workers. And later, to distinguish which exactly instance did what, we are producing this unique transaction ID. So later, when you examine your logs, you can say, ah, okay, this particular task or this particular comment was executed by the instance with the client name that within the transaction number that. So it, it's easier later to find errors or, 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 or something like that. Uh, pretty easy. Let's... Let's now try something more sophisticated. This download example. Um, here we will have uh, here we'll have uh, three steps. Uh, and now we need to work with the system tables, with the timetable, uh, with the PG timetable tables to, to put the all needed information into it, right? So the first command I will do, I will do, I will do insert into the timetable chain table and will say that, okay, I want to add the download location and aggregate chain job, right? And set it to enabled. Then I will start to add task to, uh, tasks to, to this chain. The first one will be download. This is the uh, built-in task uh, and for it to work, I want to add a parameter for this task. So I say, download the file from the uh, URL. Uh, you can use one worker and save that to the destination path like a current directory. The second task will be do something, process this downloaded file. So I will show you the content of the files and, and, and describe what the difference. So we will download the, the, the file with the UTF-8 characters. They will, contain, uh, they will contain umlauts and they will contain uh, non-ASCII characters. Okay, let's, 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 let's pretend that our goal is to transform that uh, Unicode characters to the ASCII characters and put that in the database. For that, I want to use, for example, the external program, which is um, which is called uconf, Unicode conversion, something like that. 
and I specify the uh, parameters which I want to pass to that program, right? So I want uh, the conversion to let in as key, the output file will be ort underscore nc, and the input file will be ort.txt. So the idea is we download the file ort.txt, we put it on our local file system, we want then to process it with the external tooling, and then we want to, to push it into the, uh, um, into the database. For that, we can use PSQL, for example, like copy, or we can use another built-in functionality, copy from file. Copy from file will accept uh, the, 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 um, the content of the files, and you can specify what exactly you're expecting of. If the, the CSV, or maybe this is the uh, binary output of the previous executed copy command, or something like that. Pretty simple. So again, I'm just like adding, executing the, the script and adding the, this job to my system, right? Three steps. Now, the thing is that Yukon fabrication is specific for Linux. We have no, uh, we have no the uh, Yukon utility on Windows. Let's try to execute the, the instance on Linux. And we'll see. Without debugging. Okay. So what we have here? Now we have two jobs, two chains. First one is easy, one, one step job. It's, it's okay. It, it is executed without problem. So we are interested in the chain number two. So we are starting chain number two. We download in the file and we and we process it. So what we have here? Uh, or txt. So let's check. So this is how it looks like. So you can see here that we have some umlauts like Nurbish, Grosshoflein, and something like that. We want to get rid of them, right? That's why we, we execute the second step, and the second step produced the Orte ANSI file. Yeah, as you can see, no more umlauts, only ASCII characters. And probably we need to we want to check if the uh, yeah um, what else I wanted to show you <laughs> uh, yeah uh, now for a graphical user interface the uh, the advantage, the advantage of the PG agent, PG agent or PG admin, that it has a, a beautiful user interface where you can enter the the commands, uh, the grids, whatever. Um, it's 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 user friendly because I understand that it, it's not maybe simple. To, to, to know where to put these rows, et cetera, et cetera. So as I said, it must be simple and really easy to, to, to create the UI application for the, um, uh, for the, um, uh, for the PG time table schema. So uh, I did this one. It's just a proof of concept. Uh, how do you think what exactly tool uh, I, I, I used for to create this application? It's Lazarus. It's a free Pascal and the uh, IDE on top of it called Lazarus. I worked with the Delphi, uh, with the Delphi and the Pascal at, at years, ages ago. And I was just uh, interested on what level they are now. Because I don't like the concept when you're 
when you're creating web UI for everything. Like I don't need I don't need the web UI for like two grids, right? And I wanted to to to, to try the 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 uh, the Lazarus, and yeah, I spent maybe a couple of days, and we have this, so you can check the chains, uh, you can add the grids, you, you can uh, insert the rows into the grids, and it will apply automatically. So I hope maybe someday someone will create the proper user interface. Uh, well, uh, we are working on that, but that will be the part of the Cypex. So the Cypex is the Apex analog for the PostgreSQL. So there will be uh, built-in support for the pitch time table. Uh, okay, so um, I wanted to show you probably the um, how logs looks like, right? Look like. So, by the way, how many of you do know that you can use just like table name of the table instead of select star from table? The thing is, I I had the habit, I always do that and select star from, and just like, why didn't do this? And because I was young and that's how I was learning the things. But now I'm, yeah. So, um, log. As I said, this is so-called session level log, right? So, for example, as I said, the PGTM table can be run in Docker. If you run it in Docker, you cannot see the output, right? But Sometimes you want to see what happened during the session. Here it is. Uh, what we, what the, what the PG timetable did. If you want more logs, you can specify log DB level debug, and you will have everything, every internal query, every internal parameter. You will, you can see how locking is working, how it is implemented, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But sometimes you want to see how exactly uh, some programs executed. So that would be execution log. Yeah, so we can see here that, yeah, several selects, like we executed select pg notify, and the result is select one, meaning one row return, right? Uh, for built-in task, download, we see the output, uh, okay, we downloaded the file URL, URL that one, to the uh, file that one. Um, for example, for copy from file, we see that 2,354 rows copied from that file. And for uconf, we have nothing because it, it doesn't produce any output. Um, and the thing is that if the program, the, the program tasks executed, we will combine the standard output and the, st and, and the standard error output. So if, if error occurred, you will see it in the, in the output. Um, okay, let's return to my presentation and see what we have here. Um, okay, how someone want, can test, debug the chains? How can you create the chain, right? Because probably it's impossible to create the, the job uh, like uh, from the very start, from the very beginning, you need to sometimes see the output, how to combine things, right? So for that one, we have a special mode. It's called debug mode. In this debug mode, the pitch timetable will not execute any chains, any jobs, unless you will tell you will tell it to execute one. For example, I'm starting pitch timetable in a debug mode, and I'm working in my editor 
applying some changes to my script. I put the configuration to the database, then I say, run that, run the chain, and it will immediately run in, uh, the, in the pitch time table. I see the result, I see the output, maybe applying some changes, applying again, run it again, and if we are fine, save it, and restart the PG time table in the uh, normal mode. Um, okay, so yeah, here is the uh, here is the URL where you can find the sources. Your help is really appreciated. At least, please start the project. Give some leave some comments. Yeah, so if you have any questions, it's about time. So I have two, two questions. The first one, uh, about the logging, so you log everything on tables. You don't don't log to to files. That, was that it? Uh, thank you. The great question. And as usual, I forgot about it. Yes, we have three ways of logging: database, standard output, file. For each of the destination, you can set the level of logging. For example, I may want to do the debug logging on the standard output but the normal one to the database and to the uh, file. So yeah. Cool. And the second question is, uh, looking at it, uh, to me it seems that I could use that to, um, to actually run my ETL jobs. Mm -hmm. okay. It is, uh, seems to be feature-rich enough to do complex uh, workflow. So would you say like you have customers doing that? What would you say would you recommend for that use case? Uh, absolutely. Yes, we are doing the same things locally in our Cypix uh, application. And yes, there is even possibility to react on the... So you can have a special job which will monitor active jobs and will react somehow so like oh, okay there was a false oh i mean uh, there was a fault like let's check it right or for example let me oh, how this mm. this one for example uh here you can see that we have um that we have two, two tasks, right? So the first task will produce uh, some, I don't know, 500, uh, I mean, the, this query will produce five, the chain with the 500 tasks. And some of them will fail because sometimes you cannot divide the zero, right? And the uh, last task will, um, will check the return code for the previous steps and will later produce a report. So, okay, we have uh, like 200 tasks completed successfully, we have 100 failed, and the total count of the tasks executed was like that. So yeah, from, the, from every chain, from every task, you have access to the execution of other chains, other tasks and you can control them, you can start new, you can kill a uh, frozen one, etc., etc. Absolutely up to you how you will use it. Hi, I'm, 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 I'm curious about the architecture of PG timetable uh, regarding uh, the, the difference, if there is one, about the scheduler process and the worker process mm -hmm. because uh, from your demo I got the impression that the scheduler and the worker they live or uh, uh, at least the worker is started by the scheduler process you don't have two different uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I entry got points for that thanks for is the that question it's, it's 
it, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, so the idea is um, we use Go language Go routines, the very lightweight, uh, let, let's say, threads analogous, right? So yeah, for for the for the scheduler for the receiving information, we use um, separate uh, Go routine, and we have ten more or twenty more Go routines which of them will receive chain and will execute it in parallel. So you can start your PG timetable and say, okay, I want to run this instance with the 100 parallel workers, right? And if you have a lot of chains, it, it's, it, it's wise. So the scheduler will push, will pull the information from the database about chains and then will send the chains to the 100 workers and every one of them will execute simultaneously all the chains they receive. But what if, what, if the, what if the workers, what if I want the workers to live on different machines? So I have to run the scheduler on multiple machines? And no, oh, oh, okay, okay, I got it. Uh, so, no, you, you, can run, you can run several instances on different machines, they are not connected. Uh, each of the instances has its unique name, it's obligatory so yeah they are living on their own so if i run if, if i run the pg timetable on the same host where my database lives this instance sh should ignore the fact that there are might be some other workers it knows that okay i have a chain i have a parameters i have i have i need to run that okay if there is already running chain, I can check it. I will pause and wait for the next chain. That's all. I see, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, okay, thanks a lot. <laughs>